Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we're working on Cottage Life, um, graphic 40, one of Graphic 45's latest releases. And so I've got my papers uh, laid out that are going to go on the cover. So this is going to go on the cover, and then this is going to be the spine and the back. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and start with the flat pieces, because the more we decorate the front, you know, the more um, the harder it's going to be to flip things over and put pressure on it. So the plan is this. So what I haven't decided yet is whether or not I'm going to wrap the second half. The, the front half is just going to be flat like that. So what I haven't decided is if I'm going to have this wrap around the spine toward the back. And I think that's what I'm going to do. So uh, let's move my little tray of goodies kind of in the way. Let's go ahead and start by putting this down. This is from the 8x8 collection and I left it at 8 inches wide, just trimmed it down a little bit to fit here. Oops. I hope everybody's doing good. <clears throat> this is a pretty collection. It's very feminine. Perfect for Mother's Day. Um, and I think what I'm what I'm going to do on the cover would be ideal for the lid of a box as well. If you guys don't feel like put, doing an album but want to do a decorative box or a trinket box for your mother, that would be this would be um, a good design for the cover of your box as well. In fact, I kind of went back and forth about whether or not I wanted to do a box and an album. But uh, for now, I'm just going to do um, the album. And then in the end, if I have enough paper, I might do a companion box but that's undetermined at the moment <laughs> by the way this is the cover and i'm doing it as build one which is very rare oftentimes i set aside the papers that i think i want to use on the cover um in their full form i don't cut into them and just set them aside so I don't accidentally repurpose it before I make up my mind. But in this case, I decided early on what I wanted um, my cover to look like. So that was pretty easy to do. Okay, so I am going to do a small uh, color block here, a thin color block here. So let's go ahead and get this piece down. And I just put an extra piece of cardstock on the cover just to make it a little bit more rigid. And that was just for design and planning purposes. It's not required for your book. I was just piddling around and my corners kept lifting. And I wasn't ready for, um, I wasn't ready to actually install it. So you can, but you don't have to add that additional layer of cardstock. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, and we're plenty out of the spine, which is good. Uh, this is uh, book binding tape. Um, Claire Chevelle doesn't offer her signature construction tape in any color other than black. So I'm using white book binding tape uh, from Lineco, which is in our shop if you're interested. I don't do very many light covered, light colored albums. So I'm going to do an initial trim here. And I'll probably have to take a little bit more off, but I don't want to over trim, so I'm going to do a little at a time. Let's see how I did. That's pretty darn close. Okay, now I'm going to put a little cheat mark right here where the score line is on the spine and one here. And then I'm going to lay this in my scoreboard and lightly score that, that area on both sides of my paper. So I'm going to line up my mark.
Okay, now I'm going to add tape. And again, my rule of thumb is if it's on an interactive element in the album, use tape. If it's on a static stationary, like the front and back cover, just use glue. So I'm going to tell you what the width of this is, but again, it's based on uh, the back cover. I used an 8x8, so I trimmed it down. It's 8 inches wide. So what's left here between the spine and the back cover um, is how wide this is, and it's based on, sorry about that, it's based on um, the fact that I kept the 8-inch um, paper the, the full width. So... If you're not going to do it exactly the same, this will need to be 8 inches across. This will need to be 8 inches across, and then you'll fill this. So based on that, this is 4 inches. Now I'm going to test it one more time. I might need to take a little bit off, but right now it's 4 inches. It needs to go this way. I think I'm going to have to wind up taking a couple of these off to get it to stay in place. So I'm going to take some, a strip off the center. So as I come around, you can see just because of the way I'm installing it, as you fold it around, it pulls away. So you get your color block right there. So I'm just deciding, since I've only got one strip down, let's see if I can't move that over just a little bit. Let's go ahead and start removing our tape. Everything went flying off the desk. There we go. Okay, now it's time to start lifting on this side. There we go. How's that? 
Okay, I'm gonna work that into place. I may even spritz this a little bit with some water, some moisture to help uh, stretch the paper a little. But so far, so good. Okay, and there's our nice little color block. So there's our back, here's our front. And I'm gonna be back in a minute. I'm gonna line up all these goodies that you see here on the desk and we're gonna use these on the cover. So this I'll share with you came from the cover of the collection pack. Um, let me see if I've got one I haven't cut into. I, I'm pretty sure I do. Uh, of the 12 by 12. And where is it? So I cut out this, um, and that's going to be the feature on here, which is here. Uh, this is a small ephemera card. Both of these have been backed with cream cardstock, and um, this one has been, I've added two layers of chipboard. So you can go ahead and get those ready, and then locate your Cottage Life piece of chipboard. We're going to use that, and then I'll go over all the flowers and some of the things that I fussy cut that are going to go on here, uh, and additional die cuts. So I'll be back in a second. Okay, did a little bit of housekeeping, and I spritzed. Um, my edge with a little bit of water and I feel a lot more comfortable about closing it all the way. Give it a little chance to settle in. Okay, so here's our main feature and then this is the other element that are going to be the two large elements that we're going to use on the cover. I'm going to stack it like so um, and I'm just going to arrange a few things. This is cut off the cover so it's this flower arrangement right here. I cut out the roses, and I guess it goes like that. So this I fussy cut, and then I further fussy cut here because I want to put part of this in front and part of it in the back, like so. And then this needs to stay down a little bit better for me. And then this is a die cut that I'm going to use in the upper corner. I've got my uh, corners that are going to go top and bottom. And I'm probably going to start just by putting those in and getting them out of the way so I don't misplay, misplace them. I'm also going to use a small corner and that's going to go up here. So I've got the two large corners oppose, opposing each other and a small corner up here. This is also fussy cut from the same cluster this came from. It's gonna go right there. Here's the die cut that's gonna go right here. And it's gonna actually get attached to this element so that it'll be elevated underneath it. I'm going to add this cluster of flowers. And if you look in the description, you will find all of the flowers and then over on both this side and this side, we're going to add dimensional flowers. Okay, so on both sides, we're going to add clusters of flowers and I'm just sort of bunching them together right now. So we're gonna have one of these here, one of these here. Maybe that'll go here. This is one of the elements um, that are in the charms. The cottage life will come across here. The fan is going to be just under it. This is a little basket of flowers that'll go right here. And then up on top, I'm going to feature this hair comb, which I think is so cute. And then there's also a little teeny tiny mirror that I'm gonna put up there. So that's it. And then of course, I'm gonna work in some leaves, some butterflies, and then we have a couple of these flourishes that are from the die pack. So that's all gonna get worked in. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I already know what it's gonna look like because I've laid it out a couple of times. So let's go ahead and lay in our um, filigree pieces in the corner. I like to do it early because sometimes I'll wanna put something slightly over it and um, trying to add it later, you might be trying to lift things to get to it. Okay, now I am going to use a clip to hold it in place while it dries. Possibly two clips if it won't lay flat. And man, I am having so much trouble with my arthritis lately. I hate to be a complainer, but my right hand thumb, just no strength. Okay, 
and it needs to be adjusted. There we go. There we go. I'm just using our glitter glue and it works fine. Um, I've never had any issues with it. I'm gonna add this small filigree corner to the card here. It just takes a little while to dry because it doesn't really wanna dry against the metal, but it will. You just gotta give it some time and leave it alone for a minute. Okay, I'll set that aside and look for the other large corner. which I've some, managed to mislay. That's the other reason here it is. I like to put them in early is because they're so easy to lose on your desktop. This is also a good place to use temporary tape. Hold it in place, like I can't put a clip up here. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use some removable tape. Hold it into place while it's drying. Okay, I'm gonna give that a few minutes and I'll be back and we'll start layering things in. Hey everyone, I'm back and my corners are dry. And then so is this one, so we're ready to go. So let's get started with the primary element for the cover. So it's gonna go, or two elements, because we need to put these down together because this needs to go all the way under. So yeah, I think it's gonna go about right there. So let's get some glue. on the back. Okay, I'm just using my pattern to keep it kind of straight here. That looks about right. Press that into place. So, if you're curious, I came in almost two inches, not quite two inches from the spine. Let's see how straight I got it. So I'm right. Yeah, it's pretty darn good. There we go. And then the next piece is gonna be this. So let's go ahead and get some glue on the back. And I inset this so that we can tuck some things behind it. We may not, but I like to have that option as I'm embellishing the cover. Got another element that's good. Okay, I'm just trying to keep track of everything. I want that to come down a little bit more because I want a little more of the green to show. Okay, so now here's my cottage life and I added that little tiny charm, the basket. I think it's so cute. So it's gonna go like this and then we want to add our fan over here. Okay. Good, good. That's my boys in the background. <laughs> A little more. Oh, I'm going to have to pause. I got to talk to my son before he actually leaves the house. So hang tight. Be right back. Maybe you can catch up while I'm gone. Okay, I'm back, sorry about that. I had to catch up with him, give him some stuff to put in the pantry. Now I'm back. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue um, our fan down. And I want most of it to show. 
so I don't want to tuck it too far back. Okay, so I want to put this up here, and then um, I've got a little, here it is. This is going to kind of go over it to help layer, okay? So I'm going to put uh, some glue here, and I kind of make it thick because this is not flat. Um, I want to make sure there's good contact. Hold it for a second, and then this is going to go over top like so. And I think I'm going to need to put a tiny piece of chipboard on, on the back side, which I have handy. This will probably be enough just to keep it from caving in down here. Let's see, is that going to be enough? One more layer. <laughs> I'm so sticky. I'm dropping things. There we go. It's coming together. Okay, now we still have two of these, so I'm definitely gonna put one here and one here. I'm gonna use this, this flower is gonna go in here, and I may need to trim parts of it away now that I've glued it down. I don't like to cut any of it away until I'm actually laying the flowers in. And I might not even need to cut anything away. I probably cut in deeper than I needed to, but you know what? I'm going to cut a little bit away so that it can go in a little further. Okay, I'm liking that. So that looks good. So I've elevated this area and then I left this flat because it's going to go on top of here. Sorry for all the coming and going, but it's just part of working at home. Just part of it. There we go. I think I'm going to put another piece of chipboard right there. Just to hold this element up a little. There we go. So I cut the um, leaves away from the roses and I pinched them. And the part I'm gluing down is just the pinched part. So we'll have additional dimension here. Okay. Nice, nice. And then I think I wanted this up here. We're just gonna leave that there for a second and try to figure it out. This was going here. Now it's just a question of which direction kind of like that better. So we're gonna put a little bit of elevation on these two corners and this is gonna go flat onto here. Let's see if I've got these small enough. Nope, they need to be shorter. Okay, I'm going to glue this down first and then I'm going to sneak that chipboard in underneath. 
I'm just trying to make sure that nothing's really hanging off the edge that'll get snagged. This will take a second to dry. The, the um, die cuts are very um, slick, so they don't have a lot of tooth. Okay, and then I'm going to sneak a piece in under here. So it's kind of curved down around the corner because the um, the ephemera card or this cut apart is two chipboards high and then this is just a single layer. So it kind of curves around it, which I think makes it interesting. There we go. Now I'm going to add my comb. Right there. My mirror right here. It's got, um, it's concave on the back, so I just want to make sure there's enough glue to sort of cover, cover fill that space, fill the void. Okay, now we're getting ready to work with our roses. So I had identified this little cluster. So I'm using Precious Pink and and Classic Ivory and Natural Linen. I'm using, I don't know, I guess this is Ivory because the other one is way too dark. It looks actually more like khaki to me. Um, so I'm using the uh, all of the white, but mm, that's not true. Most of the white buds, I think I have one large bud left. And then I'm using the Precious Pink. And I have some left over because I'm sticking to the smaller buds because I think they work better with this. So, and I think it, it pulls in all the colors. So there you have it. Okay, I think I was gonna do white up here. And right now I'm just kind of roughly arranging them to see if my distribution of color looks good. I actually like that down a little lower. And I've got this little banner that's going to get worked in there. Here's another peach flower and another white. I thought I had a white for down here too. Okay. So... I think I want it to curve around this way, like so. And then I'll work this little peach one in just like so. Okay, so I've got a total of three of the ivory, two of the precious pink. I've got a precious pink up here. And I think I'm going to work in one more little precious pink down just like that. Okay, so I'm going to start gluing these into place and then I'm going to tuck in other little bits um, after I get the bulk of it into place. Okay, so I'm going to start with this piece because it has a wire and it'll be the hardest one to move. This just takes a little bit of patience. Yep. 
Okay. Goes this way. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Now up here, same thing, I'm gonna start with this. I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to cut off my wires. You can. Sometimes it's just easier to place them all at once. And I haven't decided. And I think I am going to cut my wires off and just lay these down individually. I feel like I have more control without the wire. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to cascade these down and I'm going to do that based on the size of the bud. So the pink and the white are close. I don't have enough. That'll okay. I'm gonna give that a second to dry. So that's Is smashing the bud so that there's one side that's a little flatter than the other it just makes it easy to place it so that's what it's going to look like roughly and then I've got these fern pieces that I'm going to start tucking in which I think are pretty and this came with these uh, the lilac looking color this was um, the leaf that came with it which I really like I think it's I like it better than the graphic leaf anyway So there's one. And I trimmed them down so they're not the size they were. It's just not sticking. I guess I just need to hold it. I need to be patient. It's much better. And then I've got a couple of these little butterflies that I think are kind of cool. Okay. I feel like I might need a bigger flower here. But that just seems too big. Well, I'm going to try it. So we would do that. Then we could add. I have to stand up to get some perspective. Hmm. I don't know. 
I'm not sure. But I do want to add one more little flower here. So I think this is too big, so I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. So this is a graphic 45 rose. I'm going to take a layer off. And then I'm going to take a second layer off. And when you take the second layer off, there is a bead in there. You're going to remove that bead. And now we just have a smaller scale rose. And I think that's the answer. Yeah, I think I like that. But I think I'm going to put it on this side. Yep, like so. Okay. Go like so. Oh, yeah, I like that a lot better. You can do the same thing with your smaller roses if you want to get something a little bit smaller is take a layer off and then evaluate. Now the smaller roses don't have, um, I don't think they have a bead in them. We're going to find out. No, there's a bead inside the bud but there isn't anything else. So I'm just going to shake this a little bit. slightly turn up so okay then we have these little flourishes that we can work in I want it to be elevated I don't want it to blend in all the way so I'm going to tuck it in and have it kind of spray out There's one. Put one down here. First, let's add another leaf. Okay. and then we've got one more here we can add it to the top and we've got plenty of green up here so I think I'm going to add it to the bottom which is kind of what I was doing on this side and we are coming to the end okay we've got this little piece that I set aside I'm not sure what I want to do with it still got a couple of the white roses left um, I'll set them aside and we can use those on another project sometime. And then these are the leaves I took off the bottom of the rose. You can try to tuck them in somewhere if you feel like you've got a bald spot somewhere that needs something. And then I feel like this is a little vacant, so I think I am going to stash this right here. Oops. 
it's partially over, partially under. And then these are the leaves that come with the roses, so you can stash these in, you know, anywhere you want uh, to, to fill. Um, I think I'm happy with this, um, but I'm going to have to look at it a little bit before I finalize my decision. And I think I'm going to try to tuck this guy in here somewhere. Like so, and then just put a drop of glue on top. Oops, that was a little more than a drop. Should hold that all into place. Butterflies. I don't know if I want to work on. I don't know if I like that or not. I think if they were a different color, the pink is just not showing up. So I'm not crazy about that. I do have another fussy cat floral stem. I'm not sure it needs it. Okay, well, let's just say this is about 90% done. <laughs> and I typically fool around with my cover until the very end, but I think I'm pretty happy with this. I still got one of these little baby babies left, so let's go ahead and tuck them in there. Okay, and then I'm going to add a little glue to the back of it. So this, the pack of the, the little, um, what do I call it, uh, what is the color? Lavender um, flowers. Where's my package? They're 49 in market. Uh, Mara's Vineyard is called Rosé. And I think it goes really well with this garden. So all of this will be listed in the description under Show More. The first thing you're going to see is material list. And if you continue to scroll down, you're going to see... Um, uh, the cut list so as usual right nothing new there so I'm gonna mess around with this a little bit more but I think it's pretty much done and I think all my hardware is pretty much set so there we go I hope you guys enjoyed the cover and there is a small chance I might put a bow on here I don't know I still have some charms left um, so I think I might figure out a way to attach them to my spine have not figured that out yet either okay so there we go there's the cover for cottage life Hey everybody, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create. Sorry, I'm adjusting my camera just a little. I see it's crooked. Um, we are working on Cottage Life and we're gonna do the inside liner. So I've decided to do um, large pockets on the inside uh, liners so that we have some room for photos, but also we can store um, <clears throat> some of our goodies left over from the ephemera pack and the die cuts so that they can be used as you're actually figuring out where you're gonna place your photos in the album. It's always nice to have that little stash with the album itself. Okay, so we have um, a flap and a pocket. Sorry, I've got these mixed up. So let's go over the pocket size. The pocket size is six by seven and seven eighths. So it's six inches, I'm sorry, six inches across, six inches deep by seven and seven eighths. Did I get that right? No, I did not because we need a half inch. So it's six and a half by seven and seven eighths. Six and a half by seven and seven eighths. So you're going to score a half inch um, on the six and seven eighths inch side. <laughs> and then what I do is I rotate it 90 degrees, score a half inch, rotate it 90 degrees and uh, score again. So we wind up with this pocket that is finished at six and uh, just under seven and uh, seven and seven eighths. So it's gonna be seven and three eighths. So when you're finished, it should be seven and three eighths by six. 
And remember, the cover is seven and a half, so we just want it slightly smaller. And the banner should be running with these measurements, even though I stumbled over them verbally. It'll be there for you to review. So the pocket is gonna go, uh, the base of the pocket is gonna go toward the spine so that when you open the flap, you'll pull things out away from the spine. Just makes it easier because you're gonna have a stack of pages here. And then the flap is gonna get installed uh, basically on the edge like so. And we'll use a magnet to hold everything in place. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the, the tape off the back. And I'm doing this on the front and the back so you're gonna have lots of storage space in this album. Uh, for either photo mats or, um, like I said, I like to store my journal cards and die cuts and any other embellishments that I might want to use as I'm uh, putting my photos in. So I'm going to rotate this so that I can see three of the four sides. And I can look and get it centered top to, bottom, top to bottom. And I'm staring clear of my spine okay there we go so there is the pocket and I'm going to run my core tool under here just to kind of bow it out a little bit makes it easier to um, get something in when you put a pocket on top of chipboard it tends to be a little bit tighter so I'm just going to Loosen that up just a little bit. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is the flap. So I'm gonna turn it around the opposite way and we're going to apply it to the edge here. go and I chomped the corners um, I forgot to mention that you know what it's a little too high so I'm gonna see if I can't lift it it needs to come down just a little it felt, felt odd didn't feel quite right and I haven't I haven't burnished it so I should be able to lift it with my palette knife an essential tool if you don't have one get it from any craft store in the paint area Get the thinnest one you can find. And then you should be able to lift your tape back up without having to use your undo. Okay, so let's try that one more time. <laughs> Better, okay. There we go, now we're gonna add a magnet. I'm gonna put a quick reference line here so I can see from the edge of the pocket here to that line, I'm just gonna center my magnet. And that should give us enough clearance on the other side, away from the edge of the flap, to cover it uh, completely with our designer paper and not have to worry about it bowing out. <clears throat> I'm using 5 8 inch wide tape because it goes all the way over the surface of the magnet and that will soften its edges uh, underneath the designer paper because the edges of the magnets are not beveled, they are perpendicular. Okay. There we go. I'm gonna burnish that into, into place. There we go. But I am using the dark blue um, as the flap cover and I'm using this beautiful pattern for the pocket itself. This is from the 12 by 12 collection pack and this is from the patterns and solids pack. <clears throat> Let me double check, I think. I think I trimmed it to fit the pocket, so. That looks good. Okay, so I'm gonna take off my tape backing. Get a little bit organized here. <clears throat> I 
By the way, if you're watching this in May of 2022, we are now shipping heart glitter glue. So if you've been waiting for the temperatures, uh, we are shipping now. And if you're not a subscriber to our website, um, go subscribe and then you'll be notified via email when we have uh, new products or when products are shipping. Um, we just send the email out, you know, no more than once a week and sometimes not even that. So we don't want to bombard you with the same information repeatedly. We want to make sure that when you get it, you're, you feel like you're getting new information. Okay, so I used my um, corner chomper, the We Are Memory Keeper um, ticket stub is what they call it. Isn't this pretty? I love this. This is very pretty. There's a lot of pink in this collection and I'm sort of deliberately downplaying some of the pink um, to bring out some of the blues and greens um, so that it's a little bit more multi-purpose and not just too overly girly. So that is um, both sides of this. I'm going to take a break. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side, but I don't think you need to watch me do that. When I come back, we will do the inside of both. Be back in a minute. Okay, I'm back. And um, as I had mentioned, I was going to complete. Um, oh, you know what? <laughs> I forgot to put my magnet down. Uh, anyways, um, I'm going to go ahead and put a magnet under here and I'll figure out what to do over here. Um, I've completed. Uh, the, t the A sides, I've still got to do the B sides, and this is what I've chosen. So this is coming from the 12 by 12 Pattern Solid collection, and this is from the 12 by 12 uh, collection pack. So let's go ahead and get those down. Isn't that funny? I remember the magnets on one side, but not the other. Oh, well, let's see. I think I need to do some inking of the this strip. Yeah, this one's right. And then this is going to tuck slightly into the pocket, so I need to get some ink on the edges real quick. I need to test and make sure it's actually going to fit in the pocket before I ink it. Yes. Yes, it's very snug, but it fits. Okay, so I'm going to add some ink and we'll get that in. <clears throat> so I'm going to leave uh, some uh, adhesive free edge on the leading edge. It's just easier to slip it into the pocket and then back it out if necessary without dragging your glue all over the place. magnets right there. So we have this nice beautiful pocket. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to do the same thing on this side. This time 
I'm going to remember to put the magnet here. So, the magnet needs to go about right there. I think. So let's figure out what we're going to do here. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to try to do is use my spatula to push a magnet inside. And it looks like that's going to be easy enough. So um, I just use this to lift. Now I'm going to push a magnet in. Now I can't use this because it's metal and it'll just keep dragging the um, magnet back and forth. Um, I do have, and I can't, I don't see it handy. I did finally buy a plastic spatula to help me with that. And of course I can't find it. Your bone folder might work too, it depends on how thick it is. My Teflon one is definitely too fat. But I'm going to try to slip it under there and then press it down so that it doesn't come back out with a spatula. We'll see what happens. <clears throat> there we go. to lift the paper just enough. Okay. And the magnet's right there, so that worked out fine. And look, our paper looks great. So I'm just gonna carefully add some glue. To seal it. guys problem solved okay now we'll put the uh, posing uh, the take this to the other side and then we can do the, finish the liner so that was pretty easy sometimes it's harder to get the paper up than other times and if you feel like you're going to tear the paper stop because the other um, option is to place your magnet under um, some some decorative piece now I'm planning on using these on the cover, so I was glad I didn't have to use it for this purpose, but you could. Okay, now we're gonna close our flap. There we go, all set. Now we can um, go ahead and finish decorating. I mislaid. Here it is, my hook tool. color combination. Okay, now we're going to use the solid blue here. I'm going to first test, make sure it fits in the pocket, just like we did on the other side, because it is a snug fit. It does. Okay, so I'm going to ink these edges, the ones that are going to be exposed. That's my leading edge, so I'm going to start my glue um, half inch below it.
go. Lovely. <clears throat> So there we have the front and back pockets for the inside liners. And then definitely we're gonna put some fun stuff inside of there. So that's it for the inside liners. I'm gonna continue working on the pages. Um, I can't remember if I told you what the flap size is. It, it by now has probably run through in the banner, but I'm gonna give it to you verbally as well. The, um, the flap is seven and three eighths, seven and three eighths tall by five inches wide, you're gonna score a half inch. So five by seven and three eighths, you're gonna score a half inch on the uh, five inch side. Okay, there you go. Be back soon. Hey everyone, it's Stephanie from Scrap and Create and uh, we are gonna start installing our pages. So I have completed the album and I was just going through everything and checking my cut list to make sure it's gonna be there for you guys when you are ready to build yours. So I think I've got everything ready. So we are gonna start laying in, and this is page one, laying in our pages, and then that will conclude this album. And I'm not even sure what I'm working on next, but you'll, you'll know soon enough. Okay. that went in. Yeah, it did. Okay. Let's get these out of the way so I can take a look at how that's laying down. Looks good. Again, this I gotta find a hook tool that doesn't have that bump on it. It always gets hung up on my hinge. That's the only time it ever bothers me. Okay, here's our beautiful page three and four. Okay, while I'm doing this, I just want to remind you guys for the cut list, go to the show more and, or go to the description, click on show more. And the first thing you're gonna see is material list, what I've used in this project. And then that's followed by um, the cut list. So be sure to check that out. That's page four, page five. in there with lots of goodies on it so it was holding it up off the, the framework. I'm trying to be careful. Sometimes my I leave a red trail with my polish because it's just regular polish. I haven't gone back to getting any manicures yet and I'm sure that's true for a lot of you. I don't want to sit across from somebody breathing on me. <laughs> I feel a lot differently about that now. Okay, there we go. And then our last page. Uh, which one? That's it. Goes this way.
Yay! Let me get this out of the way. So that's it. So I am ready to upload this album. And I think it turned out really cute and pretty. And one, two, three, four, five. I have five of the pattern solids 12 by 12s and I'll go ahead and show you what they are. So there are these three green sheets. I said five, that's not right. I have four. And um, one of the 12 by 12s and then assorted um, eight by eight. So there is more uh, to add more photo mats to your album if you want. And then also I've only at this point covered one side of the large inserts that are gonna go into the pocket. So I'm probably gonna come back and cover those and in which case I'll have you know less, um, less left over. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and load these up. And that's, that's it, I'll be back soon with a walkthrough.